Okay, so we've been talking a lot about statistics lately, and today we were talking about something called the mean absolute deviation, which is a really sort of complicated sounding word. Sometimes it's abbreviated MAD. Um, but if we can break this down a little, and we're going to look and see how it works and how we can calculate it, hopefully it'll make more sense. So mean absolute deviation, what that really means, so when we say the word mean in statistics, that means the average. So remember the average, you add all the numbers together, divide by how many there are. And when we say absolute deviation, deviation, similar to the word deviate, that means like if you're going somewhere and you, you end up going somewhere else. So it's kind of like how far away are things. Um, and absolute deviation means when we use the word absolute, that's like absolute value. So remember those absolute value lines and you put a number inside and it means the distance and it's always going to be positive. So what we're really finding is the average distance of pieces of data from the mean. That's kind of what that is. So we're going to look at understand a little bit how that would work. So let's say we had two people, Bob and Fred, and they were doing three-pointers over five games of basketball. Let's say we wanted to take that data and make it a little bit more concise and just find out the mean for each person. So to figure out the mean for each person, I'd have 1 plus 1 is 2, plus 7 is 9, plus 6 is 15. So the sum is 15. And then we would divide that over five pieces equals 3. So that means the average, or sorry, the mean, right, for... Bob is, he made three points. That's his mean amount of score. So every game he made about three. If we take Fred and we added all his together, two plus two is four, plus four is eight, nine, 10, 11, and that he also had 15. Okay, so 15, we divide it by five because there were five scores. We would also get a mean of three. Okay, it's a little sloppy. So what we're seeing here is if I just told you that Bob has a mean of 3 and Fred has a mean of 3, it would sound like they're the same and they do the exact they do just as well as each other. But actually if we look at it we can see the score the number of three, uh, three pointers they made is actually very different. Right? So Fred is always very close to 3 whereas Bob was either way under or way over. So what we use is we use something called the mean absolute deviation to describe how they're actually different from each other. So even though they have the same mean, these two players have very different averages um, in terms of if we look at their range. And you might it might determine even, let's say you wanted to pick one for your team, you might be more inclined to choose this guy who's more consistent. Okay, So using the mean absolute deviation sort of shows and describes that. So what we're going to do is we're going to use some steps. Um, so I'm just going to put some steps right here. And we're going to go through them and sort of see sort of how how we can calculate all of this. So we're going to start with, it says, find the mean of the set of data. So as you can see, I found the mean for both of them. And that happened to be 3. It happened to be the same. You just, said, again, find that by adding and dividing by how many there are. So then your second step, find the deviations from the mean by making a table and subtracting the mean from each number in the data set. So that sounds like a lot, but really all that means is I'm going to make a table for Bob and Fred, and I've already made them. I'm just going to list the value of each one. So Bob, he had one, made one shot the first time, one shot the second game, zero the third game, seven the fourth game, and then six the fifth game. Same thing for Fred. Okay, we're going to put his scores in, or his shots made. He has two, two, four, three, and four. So I'm just taking the numbers from the tables. I'm making one for each person. I'm going to find the deviation from the mean by subtracting the mean from each number in that data set. So if you look right here, the mean was 3. So I'm going to take each number and I'm going to do that number minus 3. So I'm just going to put minus 3 kind of above this because that's what I'm doing. So 1 minus 3 is going to give me negative 2. Negative 2 again. Negative 3. 7 minus 3 is 4. 6 minus 3 is 3. I'm going to do the same thing with Fred. Okay, 2 minus 3 is negative 1, negative 1, positive 1, 0, and positive 1. Okay, so the deviation again, that's just like the change. We're, in this case, we're looking at sort of like the distance. How far away from the mean was he? Both of them had a mean of 3, so we subtracted 3 to get both of these numbers, and this is our list. Now the next thing is where the absolute term comes from. Remember, absolute means absolute value. So we're going to find the absolute value of each deviation to show its distance from the mean. 
So I'm going to find the absolute value of each of these. So this would be 2. Remember, absolute value just makes it positive. Absolute value are those two lines that kind of look like this, and you put a number inside. So this number becomes positive, positive, stays positive, stays positive. Same thing over here, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1. So they're all staying, it's just we're just turning them all positive. Now, why do we do that? I'm going to try to explain real quick with a little graph. Okay, so if we were to graph each person's data, right, so if we had Bob's data, right, we would look right here and we would see that we could just graph it like on a scatter plot. We have one, there's two ones, one zero, one seven, one six, and Fred's, he has two twos, so I put two twos, two fours, and one three. So this is graphing their data. If we graph their data, we can see how there's a pretty big range. Um, there's all this empty space in the middle here, and all of this is kind of clustered together. So if we think about where the mean is, the mean was at 3. So I'm just going to kind of put a dotted red line down at the mean. So what we're doing when we're finding the absolute value, what all this really means is we're saying, how far away is each number from that mean? So, right, so this from here to the mean, from here to the mean, from this one to the mean, this to this. And that's where all those numbers kind of come from, right? So from 0 to 3, so that was 3 spaces from the mean. From 7, okay, to the mean, that was, oops, that was 4 spaces. So we can see it had to travel 4 spaces over, okay? Same thing from this side. You can see it's just 1, 1, 1, 1, and that other one's 0, so that's directly down. So that's where we get the negative 1, 1, 0, 1. And so we had negative numbers, but again, we're talking distance, we're talking absolute value, so that's why we make them positive. So if this is getting too confusing, you could even just graph it and just say, well, how far is each one? And you could calculate that off, and then you wouldn't have to deal with negative numbers. But so we've, we've calculated the absolute value of each deviation. That shows the distance that each number is from the mean. And we're just down to the last step, which is to find the average of the absolute values of the deviations from the mean. It's a lot of stuff, but really all that means is we're going to take this third column right here, and we're going to find the average of it. So that's going to tell us what the average distance from the mean is going to be. So we could do add these all together. 2, 4, plus 3 more, 7, 10. So this adds to 14. To find the average of these, we would take those that 14 and divide it by 5. And 14 divided by 5 is going to give us 2.8. You can totally use a calculator for that kind of thing. And then over here, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to add these numbers together. So there are 4 if we sum it. And to find the average, we would divide those by 5 and that would give us 0.8, okay? So now what we figured out is that this right here, this mean, this is the mean absolute deviation, or you could even say M-A-D, okay? So that's 2.8 for Bob, and the M-A-D, the mean absolute deviation for Fred is going to be 0.8. So what does that all mean? That means that the average game he scored, his, his three-pointers made were about 2.8 from the mean. And that means his scores were kind of all over the place. Again, if we look at his graph, we can see he either got like none or he got a lot. Even though he had an average of three, he either had good games or bad games. Fred, on the other hand, he had a mean average deviation of 0 0.8. So a lot of times he was really close to the mean. Right? So his average distance from the mean was 0 0.8. So if you were thinking who's more consistent, Fred is way more consistent because he has, and he has a lower mean average deviation to show that, or sorry, mean absolute deviation. Whereas Bob was not nearly as consistent, so his mean absolute deviation is a much larger number. That mean absolute deviation, the bigger the numbers are, the more spread out they are, the larger it's going to be. So that's kind of what mean absolute deviation is. You can see some examples right here, um, and also the steps to how to calculate it. Good luck.